Okay, just doing a video on how to print with this Ender 3 Neo. Um, sorry, the Ender 3 is the version 2, and it is a Neo which has the CR Touch and some other nice upgrades. Um, so I'm going to do a print today. I printed, um, I know it's pretty dorky, but a box to hold uh, my Magic Card set in and this uh, deck is uh, blue and white. So I printed a, a blue bottom and I'm gonna print a white top. So I'm gonna come in here and release uh, this blue filament that I had in there and insert some white. There's a um, spring-loaded lever on the metal extruder feed drive on the back. And after you push it in, you can simply just pull out the filament it has a knob so you can feed it back and forth but and that's fine but the knobs a little slow the knobs meant to just extrude some filament out when you get um, it in there so I'm gonna take off my blue and then I'm gonna put on my white make sure that you notice which way the filaments coming off the roll so it feeds off to the side of the extruder don't make the extruder try to pull filament this way and then around that would cause um, some issues and um, in your handy toolbox hopefully you found spot for your side cutters here and what you're going to do is cut off some some filament at an angle so this is pointed it's really going to assist you getting that in there so i'm going to cut this off at about as an extreme angle as i can get and I'm just doing that to get a good point on the end and then I'm going to take my filament put it in the same hole that it came out of but I'm going to squeeze that lever to get this in now this is one of the parts of the Ender 3 that I think could use a little bit of assistance is um, just a better guide to get through here because it's um it's not always easy and, and right now I'm I'm definitely struggling to get it. It's flat in the end that I put on there, so I'm gonna try not quite so sharp this time. And I'm going to do it again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wiggle the filament back and forth in my hand and roll it around until the filament lines up with the hole in this uh, plastic tubing on the other side. You can press and release the lever in your hand. <laughs> of course it's not working, right? I'm not here to show you how easy it is. I'm showing you the struggles that it can be sometimes. So I'm just gonna straighten that out in my hand before putting it in and see if we have uh, some better success. There we go. There we go. And you're gonna push it in as far as it will go. Right now, my nozzle is not heated up. So I'm gonna push this filament all the way through till it stops. It'll stop at the nozzle because it can't get through. The filament is bigger around than what, the, than what the nozzle is until it gets hot to get pushed through. So you can actually see the filament in this tube right now and I'm getting close to my head there. You won't be able to see it on camera just because of the, the quality of the, the phone that I'm using and uh, the light in here. But there we go. Um, we've got the white fed in. Now I did wanna show you um, how to print and that's what we're going to do. So as I, I'm gonna go in here and just hit my auto home so this thing's ready to rock and roll. And then I'm gonna show, share my computer screen that I have right beside here. You could choose to have a USB cable go from your computer to your Ender 3 if you wanted to. I choose not to do that because of, if my computer maybe goes to sleep or does some type of automatic update or shutdown during a print, then I could have some issues where it stops printing. 
So I'm gonna put my file on the micro SD that they give you with the printer. And I'm gonna put that into my computer so I can put a file on there. Now the file that I'm going to be printing today is one that I have found on Thingiverse. I did not create this. I'm gonna go into open file and I'm printing the white box lid, okay? And again, I already know how dorky this is, but here is the white mana symbol in, in Magic. It has um, a top on it. And I'm gonna decide how I'm going to print this. I don't think I'm gonna print it this way because for you to print this top, you would have to fill this inside piece all with build structure. So I'm gonna rotate that box lid either onto its side like this, but then it would need build structure to get to the top. That's a lot of wasted filament and a lot of wasted time. So this, I believe, is the best way to print this box lid. I'm gonna go into my settings down the side, and I don't use the recommended settings that are in Cura. I use the custom ones, because as you print more and more, you can make some changes to some crucial things and make your print better. I do a lot of editing to make things lighter, but today I want this box to be strong. The infill density is 20% and cubic. I think that's all good. The printing temperature is 200 with a build plate of 50. Now, the filament that I just loaded says on the roll what it should print at. And the temperature is supposed to be between 190 and 230, and the bed 60 to 80. So for this particular filament, 200 might be okay, but 50 is a tad low. So we're gonna just change that number to 60 on the build plate. And I'm on the lower range of temperature and I'm fine with that. If I see that I, if I need the, to turn up the temperature, while it's printing because I don't like the quality, I will just adjust it on the printer. As long as I'm in the range here, I'm happy. I've slowed my print speeds down to 40. Um, I think they default at 50, and I really like the finish that I'm getting on this box. So I'm gonna keep it at 40. I'm really okay with the extra wait time that I'll have. And then I'm gonna turn off supports. I had supports on my last print, but I don't see where I will need any supports on this. It's gonna be on the flat on the print bed and the nozzle's just gonna go round and round till this thing is done, so we're all good. I'm going to use a raft as I use a raft for pretty much everything that I do. I think the raft surface is a very good idea for adhesion and um, getting this print nice and flat. And that symbol on top is maybe gonna turn out a little bit better if I first lay down um, a layer of plastic. So when you have all that done, you're just going to slice it, okay? And it's gonna tell me how much filament it's gonna use, 95 grams. I pretty much have a full roll, which is a thousand grams. So I'm gonna be okay there. And my print's gonna take 14 hours and 56 minutes. So I'm not gonna see this thing in the daylight today. It's gonna finish as I'm uh, here, here in the morning. I'm gonna save that to the removable drive. And I've had some issues in the past with the names being too long. Okay, so it says that it saved it as CE3 white box, this one right here. And it can actually cause uh, problems with the name being too long, as it not showing up on your dis display. Now, I don't think this version two has that problem, but you might be at home with a regular uh, Ender three, or actually my old CRX uh, doesn't like these really long names. So I'm just gonna quickly change the name to, oh, it's not a white bottom. You guys are distracting me here. This is a white top. And then if I go to select it, it's in my menu, it'll say blue bottom, um, white top, 
I've got that all taken care of. So after I save it, I'm just going to eject it. Usually it tells you that your USB device can be ejected, but I don't see it there anymore. So um, I can pull this out. This card, go back over to my version two. And I say version two because in the first version of the Ender 3, the card went in um, what I would call the regular way. And then version two cards go upside down. So I'm going to put that card in. Now, this printer has been manually bad leveled and it's been auto leveled. So we're good to go. I'm going to go into my menu, click print and I'm going to find that white top. It has a little preview screen here, and for whatever reason, the preview screen isn't been um, the box that's been up there. It's been something else. I think that's whoever um, put it in from Thingiverse, put their logo there maybe or something. A cool looking little guy. And this thing's going to start to heat up and get ready to print. So I'm going to get you a better view of this because um, there can be some problems, especially after uh, a bed leveling procedure where you've made changes to your printer. And we're going to watch this one get started and hopefully, actually I hope it has a little problem that we can adjust on the fly and show you how you don't have to um, just scrap something because it's not turning out. We can make some adjustments on the fly. So it looks like it's heating up the bed first. The bed takes the longest to heat up. And um, you can see I've got a little tiny bit of filament there from my Benchy that I had on there um, that was extruding um, too thin onto the bed because of that z-axis number not being very good. So we're going to hopefully catch any issues while it's doing its prime down the side, pretty much where it's just getting the filament flowing. Because we changed filament, um, it's gonna push out some blue with this white and it's also going to um, take a little while before the white even comes out. So this is a good process for you to see if you're struggling getting a good print out of your print by just hitting the print button. Um, 3D printers, uh, they don't work that way where you can just hit print all the time and everything turns out beautiful. You've got to do some tweaking. So that's what I'm hoping to show you here. My bet is... Um, my bed is heated up now. Right when it hits 60, there'll be a little delay and then that nozzle will start to heat up. Now the nozzle does not take as long. It's at 25 degrees Celsius. It's shooting for 200 and it will ramp up at a pretty good rate and your bed should just stay at the same temperature <clears throat> if you're just watching this video um, I showed in previous videos how to take the slop out of your table how to manual um, level this this neo printer that has a CR touch and then to auto level so all of that has been done and this is the first print since messing with the knobs and manually adjusting. And I won't be surprised at all if this Z offset number needs some adjusting. So if that's the one that I think I need to adjust, I can click on tune. I can click on the Z offset and then I can roll this knob to make any adjustments. I want to make the adjustments while it's laying down my raft, not later on when it's into my print. 
So I've got it all ready to do that. That negative 2.47. Negative makes the Z go down more. Uh, positive makes it go up. So we're almost there. I'm at 198 degrees. It will auto home before it prints. And then it'll do a prime. A very popular thing that I see is that when it does the prime, it doesn't stick to the bed at the end and it goes with the nozzle. If it goes with the nozzle, then I'm going to make some adjustments on my Z. And if it's squishing down too far, I'm gonna make some adjustments on my Z. So, of course I want it to be perfect and everybody wants it to be perfect, but that's not always the case. I don't expect to see any filament right away. And then when I do start to see it, it's gonna be blue because I just switched to white. The filament seems to be coming out and looks pretty good. Let's see how it goes around the corner here. And now it's gonna print the outside of my raft. And this is why I love rafts too, because if I change colors, I don't even care if my raft starts out blue as it switches to white. But this large raft needs to look the same all the way around. And the idea is that it's not gonna look round on the face, but it's not gonna look like it's being damaged because it's being flattened out too far. And this one looks beautiful. It really does. So that manual bed leveling and the auto leveling worked really well. I'm not going to change this number. I could maybe move it up a hair, but I'm not going to. It's, um, it's laying it down flattened a bit but there's no rips or tears in it anywhere like it is too flat. You can see the blue still kind of coming out of it. Okay, and again, that's why I love the raft. If you're not gonna do a raft, then when you feed your filament in, you can preheat your nozzle and then just feed a bunch of the white through until you see no, no blue left. Okay, that's how you're going to. Um, change filament, grab a file, slice it, throw it into your Ender 3, and then um, wait so you can, I don't know, get a top on your, on your magic box that you let someone else design for you.